All right, so look, you're finding the inverse function. We're going to start with a linear equation just because you start off easy so that it's a two-step um, it's a two-step process to find the inverse function. So that way it's really easy. You guys can just move into it, and then we just build off of it. Okay, we'll go to quadratics or root functions and so forth. Okay, Okay, so look, to find the inverse function, you have to know this is the original function or the given function. So this is your f of x because when we find the inverse function, I'm going to call it f inverse with that negative 1 exponent. Okay. All right, so to find the inverse, you switch the variables. So you let y equal x and you let x equal y. Okay, so if I'm going to switch the variables, y is going to become x and x is going to become y. And that's really the major step. And you guys are really, really good at this. Like, you guys are amazing at it. All right. And then all you do is you solve for y, which means you use your inverse operations. That's it. Um, as the functions get more difficult, you might have to square or square root. Um, but that's maybe FOIL? I can't remember. Um, but that's kind of it. All right. Keep going. So if I want to isolate y, right, I want this alone. So then what's the first thing I should move? If I want that alone, I'm going to want it alone on the right side. So that means these have to move to the left side. So what do I move first? The 2. And so since this is my equal sign barrier, if it is moving over, it's going to inverse operate, right? And so instead of positive 2, it becomes negative, negative 2. Very good. So minus 2, minus 2, right? So I get x minus 2 is equal to 3y. And what's the next step now, right? Because I want to isolate this y. So the 3, the coefficient is 3. How do you... Get rid of a coefficient. What's the operation? So, yeah, you divide by it, right? You can reciprocal. So if if it's a three integer, right, you can go one third, right? But most of you just go ahead and you take the three and you divide, and we'll divide each and every term. And so my mu is x over 3 minus 2 thirds is equal to y. So if we were to kind of switch it just to make it more presentable, it's y equal, if you want, the 1 third x minus 2 thirds, which means my inverse function is that, 1 third x minus 2 thirds. And that's your inverse function. That's it. And on a linear function, um, some of you are just really quick with it because it's you know, reciprocal and then it's just one inverse operation in the beginning. Okay, so what you're doing then is that, right, this is the assignment, this is number three. What then you're doing is we graphed on Friday, we graphed the original line y equal 3x plus 2. So now you're going to graph this inverse function 1 third x minus 2 third. And so I'll put it on the side, or I guess I should have left space. Y equal, no, one third x minus two third, right? I can cover it. All right, so estimation, because right, negative two thirds is a fraction. If you want a calculator to see what negative two, what the decimal value is, it's negative 0.7 right because it's really six ongoing so this is like negative 0 0.7 okay so negative 0.7 if this is negative one this is a half i'll just go a little lower here's my <laughs> negative 0.7 and then you're just going to rise one right if it's one third up one right three So up one and then over three. One, two, three. Up one, one, two, three. No. And then where is it? And then we'll take the fold. All right, 
right, so this is my original function. This is my inverse function. Okay, and lastly, and then I'll cut the video off. Um, what you guys are going to, your, your visual check is, remember, in order to find the inverse function, and just like you guys have been doing with the tables and your coordinates, we let y equal x and x equal y, you switch. So this line, x equal y or y equal x, that's a line, right? The, the y-intercept is 0, the slope is 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over 1. I gotta put the dots because otherwise I'll mess up on the calculator. Okay, every inverse function has this line. You're not obligated to graph it. Obviously, when you move up in your math classes, kind of in the beginning, I'll have you um, graph it. It's typically a dashed line. I just did a solid line so I don't mess up the dash. All right, this is your dashed line. This is the fold. So if you guys remember from kindergarten, where you would like, or cut with paper, and you open it, it's a snowflake, or you would paint, then you open it, it's like a butterfly, right? One half, it's symmetric. Okay, if you fold along this line, the function f and the inverse function f of negative one, right, the inverse function, they should land on each other. So if I was to fold this, I know the video's going really long, but I'm gonna fold it the other way. Okay, if I was to fold here then, they should be lying on top of one another. I mean, I can kind of see through here, but you can look at yours. They should be right on top of each other, and that's because the coordinates have switched. So that's why someone here, they started graphing, um, and what they did is they got the points here, like say this was um, 0, 2, they knew this was 2, 0, and so they can switch it. So when you guys are graphing, um, it's not going to be perfect, well, it will, depending on the functions, you just, depending on the, the var well, you're going to get decimals, and so what I mean is your graphs aren't going to be perfect. Because you're graphing on paper with, you know, graph paper, and you're getting decimals, and you're kind of guessing where it is. So obviously, decimals is going to be the perfect graph, and we'll, of course, have human error in our graphs. But it shouldn't be enough human error that if you were to fold it, you can see that they land right on one another. Okay. Fair. So that's what you're doing to only these problems. <coughs> Three, six, seven, eight, and ten. That is it. You're not doing like four, five, or nine. Um, if say you're struggling, then I'll have you try another. But just kind of go slowly through this. Okay. So uh, take six and solve for the inverse. Graph it and get them both graphed on. This. All right. Let me shut this off, and then I'll come around and collect your work, and that way you guys have something to work on.